that putt was hit way too hard, uh, Johnny. Obviously, right from the start, you could see that that putt was really killed. Not a good putt at all. Don't know if it was the gravity of the moment. Obviously, a very tough putt, but uh, not, a, not a good effort. Longer and Montgomery beat uh, O'Mara and Tiger 5-3 and three in the foursome. Uh, let's take a look at this putt one more time. I'm sure you're thinking, well, I've got to get it to the hole. I've got to make eagle. So I got to give it a hit. Last minute, he gave it a little right-handed. This ball. The only chance he has a fluff laid down on that one. Now Mark O'Meara. His chip from just over 30 feet. Oh. Oh, well, that sort of sums up the last hour and a half of uh, Americans' uh, exchanges. Just a roll from an eagle from been O'Meara. Conceded. It's all over. Conceded, and the Europeans add another point. Three and one. Faldo and Westwood, and Faldo quick to raise his partner's hand. Lee Westwood was certainly a star in this match. Birdie at 5, 9, 10, 11, and 15 for Westwood. And maybe Eagle at 17. So three wins for the Europeans in four ball. One match yet to play. And can Phil Mickelson and Tom Lehman salvage a point for Tom Kite's U.S. side? Looking at the scoreboard, Kite can't like the numbers there. The Europeans adding throughout this day to their lead. Started at four and a half, three and a half, now seven and a half, three and a half. Big day for the Europeans. Uh, Orlando neighbors and friends, Mark O'Meara and Tiger Woods have been paired in all three rounds. They're one and two. Let's get the reaction. Roger. Thank you, Dick. Uh, condolences fellas uh, Lee Westwood was the difference in the match he got going with that birdie put on nine it looked like you fellas were in control and when that happened everything started going Europe's way there's no question about it, Roger uh, you know Tiger played well I played reasonably well we didn't make the putts you know that's kind of the way it was yesterday a little bit too in the afternoon and today it was uh, it was the same and Lee played uh, some superb golf I mean there's no question about it and uh, they made the birdies and we didn't that is plain and simple and they ended up winning Tiger, what's the mindset now? Uh, obviously, Europe has forged a pretty commanding lead at this point. Makes the last match certainly very important. Very but important, uh, what's yeah. your mindset now? Well, if, if we get that point back there, I'm sure we will. Then um, going to the afternoon, we need to make a comeback. Something uh, reminiscent to uh, last time at the Belfry when uh, Cookie and, and, and Beck led the way. And then I think if we can do that kind of a comeback to this afternoon, then it will be a ball game tomorrow. Well, good luck to you, fellas. Thanks. 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 Back to you, Dick. All right, Roger, uh, Woods and O'Meara defeated by Faldo and Lee Westwood, three and one. Faldo now has passed Arnold Palmer and now has 23 Ryder Cup wins, most in history. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Dick. Lee, how were you able to take over this match? Um, I don't know, really. We just got on a roll, which is uh, what you've got to do in better ball. Um, and, and we've strung, strung, you know, a lot of birdies together, which is very pleasing. How is it that you are not intimidated by Tiger Woods at all? Well, I mean, you haven't got to be intimidated by anybody. Uh, we're all professionals out here, and uh, you just got to play the hole more than the, the, the players. Uh, try and birdie, birdie each hole, and that's all you can do. Nick, let me ask you about the putt on 16, proving to be the difference. Yeah, that was just sheer relief for me. You know, I, um, you know, I felt I was, you know, sort of trying to be anchor man and trying to, trying to knock one in or something, and you know, nothing was happening, and. Uh, that thing just, you know, I was just praying. It, it ran straight for like the last eight feet. What I've been seeing so far, I've been, you know, they've been lifting out once or anything. So I just, it was just sheer relief that it just stayed online and, and went in. You're going to go get your feet up. You're tired, aren't you? Yeah, we need a rest. Thanks. All right, right. let's All send right. it back to Dick Ember. Thank you, Jim. Faldo and Westwood with another European point. The score now. The European seven and a half to three and a half over the United States, needing only 14 points to retain the cup. And USA leads in one match. Lehman and Mickelson one up over the Spanish pair. Ignacio Garrido and Jose Maria Olazabal at the tough par 4 16, where all four have hit their approach shots. Ignacio Garrido will putt first or play first. 
Gary? Dick, he is uh, just off the green. He has found the uh, primary cut of rough. Lie is fair. Is pitching the ball down the hill, so it will be fairly quick once it gets onto the putting surface. Pretty severe downhill lie, so it will be difficult to get the ball in the air as much as he would like. What a shot, Gary. Seve Ballesteros has paired the two Spaniards, Olafabel and Garrido. What are the pros and cons? The pros are that we speak the same language and uh, obviously uh, we understand each other very well. But uh, I think it, do, it, it could be a, a problem just uh, pairing us together because uh, we are playing in Spain and it will uh, be an extra pressure for us. Trying to do too much in front of the home fans. Well, there's a lot of positive to it. Also, these fans are very pro, uh, obviously, for their Spanish players, and uh, there's a lot of good vibes going on, and uh, it's just a great experience for them. Did you, uh, or were you uh, inspired, your game, by fans that were rooting for oh, you, sure. and you really felt you had that advantage? No doubt about it. Good vibes. There's no telling how many tournaments were really won by Arnold Palmer because of all those good vibes pulling for him. Gary? makeable putt right here. Slow. <laughs> Bottom line, Americans are just not making enough birdies. I mean, you look at guys like Lame and two birdies today, Mickelson, two birdies, O'Meara makes two birdies, Wood make three birdies, Faxon, no birdies, and then Couples, an eagle and two birdies, love one birdie, if you can imagine the whole day, and just Justin Leonard with one good stretch, he went eagle, birdie, 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 birdie. So he was the only really American that, you know, in better ball, you're supposed to make more birdies than you normally do because that's, you know, you can turn it loose. So a very, very poor output uh, by the Americans with birdies. And that's some serious firepower that we just named off, guys that make birdies in their sleep. Now, speaking of birdies, the uh, Europeans with a chance here to win the hole and move to all square with two to play. Olaf Abel makes this putt. Looks to be fairly simple, John. Yeah, it is a simple putt. It's a, the, the fall line on this putt is uh, right over in this direction here, so the putt is just going to move just a little bit to the left. side with the broom out trying to sweep all four of the four ball matches leading seven and a half to three and a half already more than halfway in their point count to retain the cup and no one enjoying it more than the captain himself welcome back to the 32nd Ryder Cup and a big day for Europe we're down to the final four ball match and moving to 17 all square Mickelson Lehman against Olafabel Garrido this match uh, developing with the Europeans one up through nine, then the U.S. won 10th and 11th holes for a one-up lead. And at 16, the Europeans even, all square, two to play. Well, this is a big gamble here, Dick. Tom Lehman going with a five-wood, 237-yard shot. He can hit this club, though, high. Well, he's got it going to the right, Johnny. See if it stays or whether it keeps trickling, the moisture will help this. A little bit of mud on the ball maybe also. See that piece of mud? That might save it. It, it did. <laughs> Good call, Johnny. <laughs> a little piece of mud. It's right on top of the ball. You can see the brown on top.
That's a very good shot, actually. And there is a little bailout to the right, and he used it. Shades of the 17th at uh, U.S. Open at Congressional. This time it stayed dry. What a great birdie by Olathebel on the last hole, huh, Gary? That was just so clutch. Well, we've seen him do it many, many times, haven't we, Johnny? And uh, you could almost feel the energy that this team is gathering from the gallery there. Very much for the Spaniards, as you would expect. Phil Mickelson will be next to play. He really got a little bit of a bad break. He had a pretty good-looking tee shot in the ball. Took an awkward kick in the ball. Found the rough on the right-hand side. Sitting up, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's sitting pretty well. Um, still a lengthy shot. 221 yards to the flagstick. About 218 to carry the water. Tough shot out of the rough. A little wet. Long iron over water. Well, he also got it way up in the air. What a shot. Mm. Let's see if it comes back down. It's going to. That's going to be a good eagle try right there. What a golf shot out of the rough. That's the first sign of life by the Americans in a couple hours. The uh, first good thing that's happened to them. And the Americans in the gallery with a chance to cheer a superb effort from Phil Mickelson. Yeah, that was that's just a straight in eagle putt there. Really good chance to finally make one. He hasn't been making the putts. Who's next, Gary? Uh, Garrido will be next to play. Dick, uh, right in the dead center of the fairway. Very flat lie. 219 yards. He's taking a five wood. This is also a good looking shot. Slightly right of the flag. Oh, he flew the green and into the back bunker. Uh, Gary, how come the long second shots compared to the groups that went in uh, pri prior to them? Well, the wind feels as though it may have switched direction ever so slightly, a little bit more across from the right instead of straight behind. Uh, three woods off the tee, maybe by uh, Americans? Uh, didn't, uh, I think Tom Lehman did, yes, but I think Nichols went with the driver. Hmm. Olathebel now, a really tough shot, severe downhill lie, hmm. with a three iron. He can hit those long irons high, though. Well, he sure needs to do it here, John. Very easy to hit, just what he just did there in the practice swing, hit it thin or hit it a little heavy, right in the water, off this lie. Got it up in the air very nicely. It's also going a little right of the flag. No mud on Olathebel's ball. There's mud in your eye. That's bad luck for Olathebel, who two years ago was sitting at home seriously wondering if he would ever play this game again. His team, the European side, leads seven and a half, three and a half. But thanks to Phil Mickelson, American hopes of avoiding a shutout and four ball are alive. Mickelson looking at a possible eagle when we come back. A lot to say about high-tech communications. It's even brought captains <laughs> close. Uh, they don't stay on their side of the field. Uh, they've been uh, right there with each other all along. It's very unusual. Normally you'll see captains stay with their own guys and away from each other, but it's sort of nice to see that they're still smiling and, you know, it's, it's good fun. It's good, good tough competition, and they're not taking it over the line. Now, Old Thibault's fourth shot. Tough little pitch shot here. Just downhill wide to an uphill shot. Got to bump it into the bank, I'm sure, and uh, one hop it on the green trickle. In. This will be a birdie. Yeah. Nope, it's 
up that ridge and then down to the right <laughs> to the right and uh, it's been uh, very difficult uh, experience for Olaf Abel here a little unkind very 17. unlucky that second shot was a very fine shot and uh, his ball of course went into the water and uh, Lehman's picked up the mud and uh, hung up so it's really the first good break we've seen and maybe bad break for the Europeans Meanwhile, yep. Mickelson with a chance for Eagle. Who's next, Gary? Uh, Garrido will be next to play from the back bunker. And I think what uh, he and Olafopel are doing right now is just trying to pick out a spot, of an area where he would like to ideally land this bunker shot. And he's trying to do that right up on top of that little ledge in the back right portion of the green. Not a very big area, not a very big target. We'll see how this ball comes out with this crushed mar marble that we have in the bunkers here. It's uh, unique. I don't know anywhere else in the world that has this situation, but uh, the balls have not been it's beautiful sand, by the way, gorgeous color, but uh, it hasn't been putting a lot of backspin on it. Well, I think that's got, well, it checked a little bit. Perfect shot. And still it's gonna come close to going off the green. What a shot. What a golf shot. So is that ball inside of Phil's? Well, we've seen some spectacular shot making today. Couples with an eagle at eight. Justin Leonard eagled four. A shot by Mickelson here at 17. Perhaps as good as any we've seen. And, uh... Really two good eagle tries here by, for the Americans. Uh, Lehman is just right of the green and very makeable. He's thinking nothing but eagle from here. Not a lot of green to work with, Gary, but uh, there he's consoling with, I mean, uh, talking to his caddy, Andy Martinez. I don't think he's made up his mind on the type of shot he wants to play, Johnny. He had the sand wedge out like he was going to try to actually carry the ball up onto the putting surface. Now he looks as though he's maybe eyeing an area short where you would bump it into the hill. You can do a lot of things here. That's what makes this uh, closely clipped area so intriguing because you can putt it, you can hit it with a five, six, seven iron, you can hit a bumper into the hill with a pitching wedge, you can flop it, you can lob wedge it in there, anything you want. Uh, might even use that three wood from that position. Yeah, it's possible. Not his best effort there. Well, John, I'm surprised when the guys used the putter. Davis Love did the same thing from behind the green, and anytime you have to putt through that much fringe, it's just very difficult to judge how hard you need to hit the shot. The only thing good with the putter is you usually are assured that you're going to get it on the green. You're not going to make a fool out of yourself, you know, skull it or chunk it or something in front of all these people. But surely that shouldn't be the thought uh, process that they're going through, but I asked you earlier, Gary, who is away uh, uh, between uh, Garrido and Mickelson? Well, John, to be honest with you, when you asked the question, there was so much noise by the bunker shot that had been played by Garrido, I didn't hear it. And uh, having not gotten up here in time to see exactly where Mickelson's ball is, I'm still not sure. Well, I do know that uh, Tom Lehman will be away, which, in essence... Mickelson could putt. Yeah, it's sort of a non-event. Uh, the birdie is pretty much a given unless <laughs> Phil does something very strange. He's got the kind of putt you just get started. It's dead straight. Uh, the kind of putt he should make if he hits a good putt. Lamont, on the other hand, will be swinging to the right toward the front portion of the green. Garrido's putt yes. uh, so he will basically have to make this otherwise the hole will probably be conceded to the Americans and they will go one up and be dormy putt is 
just slightly back up the hill and Johnny I would think the tendency would be for it to move to its to the left just slightly just 25 years old no significant match play experience and he's playing like he's uh Seve Ballesteros in his prime from the nation's capital Madrid Garrido making his father a Ryder Cupper in 79 very proud talk about clutch how about that up and in Gary how about that up and in you'd have to try that bunker shot to appreciate it well, that's some four uh, now Mickelson needs three to win the hole I really haven't seen Phil make a important putt in quite some time he's way way overdue what will this one do Gary well, as John Johnny said, it's uh, downhill and, and it doesn't have a lot of movement to it. We've seen this putt, Gary. It's straight. It may be left center, but uh, it is not a hard putt. I know it's hard under the circumstances, but you just get it started, it's going in. Very similar to the one we saw Colin Montgomery make earlier today. about time the USA squad made an important putt. It seems like it's been a long, long time. and the Europeans everything going right although they've not conceded yet Nicholson waiting look to be in all the way didn't it Jenny well we'll watch that ball and you'll see a ball go literally down in the cup he had already was ready to pick it out of the hole see a little bit of movement and it's in the hole and it's like it hit uh, a brick face for some reason ricocheted it didn't lip out it just sort of ricocheted to the right and now after a possible eagle needs this a testy three-footer to have the hole Terrific shot making to only keep it all square. And Phil uh, scratching his head wondering, what are we going to do? Well, one hole to play. Who will win 18 or will each side earn a half point? Welcome back to Valderrama, the final of the four ball matches today. The Europeans winning the first three, all square. Mickelson Lehman, Olathebel Garrido. Four wayward drives, and this is Olathebel sizing up his second shot. Mickelson is already hit. He's well off the green in the rough to the left, and Garrido is in the bunker fronting the green on the right. This is the seventh of the first 12 matches of this Ryder Cup to go to 18. Reflecting how competitive it's been, but the Europeans are making the key and crucial shots, especially on the green and have a four-point lead. Now let's take a model of this hole and you can see right now the players wanted to hit it in this area but they did not. We had a couple drives over in here. Lehman is in this situation here but what we have now is uh, uh, a second shot uh, from Ola Thobble that's over here in the trees and he's gonna have to fit it around here and hook a big hook and uh, it's gonna be a tough shot to hit. He's got a good bare lie which might help but most likely the right bunker could be uh, definitely in play uh, so we'll see if he can hit this shot. Sort of a Chi-Chi special to see if he can hook it around. He's got to hook it about 30 yards, I think, Gary. John, I would say at least that, and, and that's only half the problem. He's got to fit it in between uh, the two cork trees that are up here, uh, I'll say about 70 and 80 yards short of the green. This is a pretty creative shot right here. No holes in the trees to go through, huh? 
No, not, uh, not right around where he is. He's got to keep the ball low to get started. Very hard to hit that big, big a hook and not get a lot of loft on the club. Wants to start it right here and then hook it right around if he can. going to catch the right bunker, I believe, John. Actually, quite a good shot. Garrido already in that bunker with his second shot. A similar play, trying to hook his way out of trouble deep in the cork trees. And uh, the lie now of Olathabo, or check that, Lehman, at least wayward of the four drives. What kind of uh, yardage does he have here? Uh, 172 yards to the flag stick. I'll be muscled this out with maybe a seven iron. That's what he's taking, John. He's a very, very strong man, and he is very good out of the rough. He can get down through it and power it out of there. He just wants to get it on the green. Anything on the green right now looks like a superstar. Five hours of play and a full point at stake. All square here at 18. Lehman could be the U.S. answer. Muscled it. May land a little short, but should jump forward. Darn good shot there, Gary. Very nice. So Lehman, the only player in position to score on the green. The U.S. hungry for a point, trailing by four. Final four ball match. Welcome back. Jose Maria Olofable from the bunker, his third shot. And a very difficult one, about a 40-yard bunker shot to the hole. They say the hardest bunker shot in golf is a long explosion. That's probably about as far as you could hit it with that club, Gary. Well, I would agree, John. I think he was a little surprised the ball sat down as fast as it did. As we've talked about, it's very difficult to put a lot of spin on it out of the sand. But I guess it was just such a forceful swing, so much club head speed that uh, he did manage to spin it. To get it there, you almost have to go with 900 a pitching wedge and open it up and pray you hit about an inch, inch and a half behind it. So it's a good shot he hit. At stake, a full point. Of course, again, if they should have the match, a half point each. It's all gone to the Europeans since we've taken the air some uh, five hours plus ago. U.S. without a point. Including the two matches concluded after being uh, suspended with darkness yesterday. And foursome. But here's uh, a player that has worked some incredible prestidigitation. Magician. Mickelson and he uh, will wait for Garrido's bunker shot this one not a whole lot easier uh, it is a little bit closer but uh, not quite as good a lie this ball a little bit above his feet tendency is for the club to dig into the sand a little bit the shot to come up short Pretty darn good. The only luxury Mickelson might have here, Johnny, is that his partner is on the green in two. Layman. Well, if there was a shot that uh, he probably is the best in the world at, uh, Gary, this might be it. Well, this is his patented shot, no question, John. He's, he's drawn a reasonably good line in the rough. 
I'll open the club face up, try to just flop it up in the air. Came out with sort of top spin on it. It's that kind of Bermuda rough and uh, just jumped on him. So sort of uninspired a little bit. Uh, Could have made that eagle on 17 after the great shot out of the rough. And I can't tell you how great that shot was at 17, but got a little lucky in the putt. But he looks like he's a bit drained, Gary. Mickelson doesn't look uh, well, John, like he's energized. I would agree with you 100%. I noticed uh, several times, uh, especially on this back nine, um, he was sitting on his golf bag as he was waiting, um, like he was trying to keep the weight off his feet. Uh, like he was running out of energy. Well, the pace of play by Garrido and Ola Thottable isn't exactly Greyhound special, so, I mean, these guys really, you know, after this time of day, used to siestas, they play a little bit like it, too. This pair has to be tired. You can almost see it in Mickelson's eyes. All three of his matches to 18 holes, two of them with Lehman, and Lehman, too, has been forced to go the full 18 in all three of his matches. But he has a chance with this putt to win the match and earn the United States an elusive point. putters on the planet and uh, comes up four feet short. That was very unexpected, Gary Koch. Well, it was, uh, Johnny. I mean, the putt was dead up the hill. I mean, it was certainly a situation where you could just go ahead and hit it firmly. And there's a man right there that has seen everything in the last two hours go his way. Captain Ballesteros. And it's continuing. <laughs> what a day. Captain Tom Kite must be wondering how he can get this all-star side back on track. Yes, it is, Johnny. It is coming right straight down the hill. What's on? Looks good. Whoop. Mm. So a bogey five for Mickelson. I'll see if the European putting uh, prowess continues, Gary. They've made all the clutch putts so far. Well, they certainly have, John. They've made uh, several right here on the 18th green. And if either Olafable or Garrido sink their par putt, that makes uh, layman's all the longer. Well, this ball will definitely be moving to his left. a moment. First time ever the Brighter Cup hosted outside the United States, Great Britain or Ireland in Seve Ballesteros home country with two Spaniards completing the four ball already winning the first three four ball matches now battling for more points. He wants to go down there and tell him, hey, everything's fine. It's tough for him to not say something. <laughs> you know he wants to coach him.
moment for Spain. Lehman still has his putt. Doesn't look quite so simple now to have the hole save a half point for the U.S. But Ola Thabel with his birdie putt at 16 that took the Americans' lead, sent it to all square, and now that putt to put pressure on Lehman as the European side assured of at least a half point. And this putt's got to look like a, an impossible putt almost. It just seems like everything's going the wrong way, and uh, hopefully Tom can get his stuff together and pour it in there. He's a big-time player, and Tom Kite's probably just shaking his head like, what a day we're having. Not a lot of break. You can see Phil Mickelson. So a half point to each side. And quite a battle, again, stretching through 18. So many heroes today, most of them, if not all of them, on the European side. The United States outright has won only one of the last eight matches in this Ryder Cup. Europe now needs only to win six of the remaining 16 matches to retain the cup. Eight for Europe, needing only six more punts to keep the Ryder Cup at home. And the emotional leader of this team, no question, the captain, Seve Ballesteros, celebrates a terrific Saturday. Back to uh, the south of Spain, as you can see, darkness has fallen. It was a confusing day made that way by, again, a lightning and rainstorm this morning. All the plays started two, three hours late. Therefore, after the four ball matches, there was limited time to squeeze in whatever action would come from the foursome, the four foursome matches, and only one of those complete. Let's go to the action now. Europe leading 8-4 after the four ball matches. Very interesting match here. Lee Jansen, Jim Furyk going against Colin Montgomery and Bernhard Langer. U.S. two down, two to go at 17. Furyk's third shot. Beautiful little wedge shot here. Nips it off this wet grass. That puts it right underneath the hole, right where you want it. And Jansen would convert the birdie. U.S. wins 17. One down going to 18. Third shot, Montgomery, after he had driven it into the woods, longer chipped out. And Montgomery going with the 9-iron here. It's getting dark. And he hits it crisply right there underneath the hole. Very fine shot. Shurik's second shot on the green, but leaving Jansen this long putt for birdie to win the hole and square the match, earn half a point. It's darn near dark right now. The lens doesn't pay it justice, and uh, I think because of that, he blows it by almost 15 feet. Very disappointing for Lee Jansen. Now, Furyk needs to sink this par putt and hope that Mahdi two putts, but again, symptomatic of the entire day. Miss putts by the Americans where the Europeans converted. They concede two up victory, Montgomery and Longer, and the lead boosted to 9-4 for the Europeans. The second match, Scott Hook and Jeff Maggard against Nick Faldo and Lee Westwood. Faldo at the fifth, this pretty birdie putt to go three up. And it appeared the route was on. But Jeff Maggard at the sixth quickly took one hole back. Right from the fringe, about 15 feet. Good looking putt and stroke. And the American side two down, going to seven. At the tenth, Hoke with a birdie chance to move the Americans to all square. He won the ninth hole. Another good putt. And for a change, it was the Americans mustering a rally. They would win the 12th as well when play was suspended. The U.S. won up through 14. Now to the third match, Tiger and Justin Leonard against Garrido and Parnovic. Leonard got the Americans off on the right foot. Yeah, Tiger hit a good drive in play. Justin got to play it over those trees. Just a wedge. It's looking good. And Tiger 
would complete the birdie to give the U.S. the early lead one up to the seventh. Jesper Parnavik, as he played well the last two days. This to square the match. Seemingly in trouble from the heavy rough. He lobs it up there. Match halted by bad light, as the British would say, but, boy, sparkling play by the Europeans all day. Match number four, Love and Couples going against Ola Fabel and Roca. At the second, Couples for Birdie and an early U.S. lead. Little slider putt. And he knows it's in right here. Yes! To the seventh, and Roca with this chip. Another out of the long rough, just pops it out of there, and in. And the Europeans who had won the fifth hole take the seventh when darkness halts play, and Roca and Olathobel with a one-up lead. So Europe, 9-4, only five points away from retaining the cup. It was as brilliant as this Spanish sunset, the play of the European side, and uh, reflected, in fact, as Jim Gray talked to the European captain. All right, thank you very much, Dick. I'm here with Seve Ballesteros. Seve, total dominance today by the Europeans. You win 6-1 to one since the beginning of the day. What accounts for this dominance? Well, it's just the way it goes. Sometimes, you know, things go going right and then sometimes things uh, can go wrong. And uh, I guess uh, it was a lucky day for the Europeans. And um, we still have to uh, keep going and try hard because uh, the U.S. team is very strong and uh, I have a lot of experience. I play uh, golf uh, long enough to, to know that uh, you can relax. You have to, we have to keep a focus and we have to keep trying very hard because uh, still, you know, Things can, can change, and, and it's a long way to go. With the first cup coming here to Spain, there's something very historic for you, and I'm sure something very, very personal that you're on the eve of. Can you describe your emotions? Well, I'm, I have my emotions very much in control right now. I don't know by, by tomorrow afternoon. It depends what happens, of course, but uh, um, I think it's great to see uh, that uh, the Red Cup is, is in Spain. Uh, I feel very proud and it's, uh, and it's a great honor to be the captain, especially uh, leading this uh, group of uh, 12 uh, great players and also they, they're 12 great men, you know, great people and uh, the team spirit so far is very good and I didn't have any problems and I cannot be any happier because the result is, is going, you know, it's going great. But still, as I said before, I don't think we should relax. You're on the verge of emotional here. All right. Good luck Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you. All right, let's send it over to Roger Maltby. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Captain Tom Kite, you brought to Valderrama what was considered to be the most talented squad, but so far the Europeans have proved to be tougher. They've won all the tough matches and certainly have dominated the backside. Your thoughts? They really have. There's no question about it. I, I'm at a little bit of a loss as to what uh, what happened and why we're having so much trouble. Certainly they are outpotting us. There is no question about it. We're having so many putts that are... They're looking good, coming right up there to the hole and just missing, and they are making a ton of putts. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I went out this morning, and I put what I thought was my absolute four best teams, the best combinations that I could do, and they beat us three and a half to a half. And, uh, um, you know, you got to hand it to them. They did some great things. Well, I know you've spent uh, two years in preparation for this moment. A lot of your heart is in it. What do you tell these guys tonight? They can get them turned around, get them believing in themselves. Well, somehow we're going to have to do it. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to tell them, but uh, uh, there's no question that we're going to have to uh, get some confidence and we're going to have to start having some things happen tomorrow if we're going to get back in this match. Well, thank you. Have a good evening and uh, best of luck to you tomorrow. Thanks, Roger. Back to you, Dick. Tom Kite, uh, stunned as are so many. The U.S. trails 9-4, 12 singles tomorrow, and the completion of today's three other foursome matches. What are the Americans' chances of a major comeback? They need 10 and a half points. We'll get Johnny's thoughts when we return. It's Captain Tom Kite, a sobering Saturday in Soda Grande, Spain. His team down 9-4. He must be wondering, what can he do to get some points tomorrow? Well, how can the Americans rally? they got to change this momentum. Right now, it's all in Europe's favor. All the exchanges have gone Europe's way. 
uh, tomorrow in those three remaining uh, foursomes matches. They have got to win those matches or at least come away with two wins and a tie. Then the momentum has changed and in the singles. Our, our, our team is very deep, and with that momentum going our way, they got a chance. Well, like going into this uh, Ryder Cup, the thought was that uh, Seve would have to manipulate to get some points early, but when it got to the 12 singles, the American depth would prevail. It could happen, but we've got to get better play out of the three major championship winners, Love, Leonard, and Woods. They've only won, accounted for one point in six matches, seven matches. And they'll have their chances tomorrow. As we remind you tonight on NBC, a National Geographic special followed by the blockbuster movie Drop Zone. That's tonight on NBC. And join us tomorrow live 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific for the conclusion of the 32nd Ryder Cup. After that, it's the NFL on NBC beginning at 12.30 Eastern. Most of you will see unbeaten Jacksonville battle Washington. Some of you, the Jets against the Bengals or regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area. For our entire broadcast team here at NBC Sports, I'm Dick Kenberg. We'll see you again tomorrow morning for the Ryder Cup conclusion. The Europeans need only five points to retain the Ryder Cup.